den Spruch er gesungen tut, so mach ich den Burschen gleich zum Gesell. Knie nieder, David, und nimm dieser Schell. Steh auf, Gesell, und geh in Kande in Streik. Du merkst dir dabei die Taufe zugleich. Fehlt sonst noch was und keine Schild. Wer weiß, I didn't really ever think Meistersinger was a role that I was going to do because uh, twice very early in my career I did uh, productions where I was one of the Meisters and spent the whole night sitting in the dressing room <laughs> you know, playing poker, eating pizza, whatever. And um, it just seemed to me like it was a long, long opera and I didn't really get into it at all. And um, after all the Votons, uh, people kept coming up to me and saying, when are you going to do socks? And it just, I felt like it was expected of me. So uh, the Met asked me to do it and uh, asked if I was interested in doing it. And at first I said no. And um, so then later they asked me uh, about the Paleos and Milizan. And I said, at first I said, okay. And then I looked at it some and I thought, no, it's not something I'm interested in. But I went back to him and I said, but I'll do the Meister Singer if you want. So uh, I started working on it, and it took me about five years, actually, working on and off, not steady. And uh, I got to say, in the beginning, I, I really didn't like it. Uh, I got very frustrated with it. There were so many words, and um, my score ended up flying across the room several times, you know. And uh, everybody kept saying, just wait, just wait. There'll come a time when it'll all be clear, and you'll love it. And uh, I thought, yeah, right, okay. And sure enough, uh, I guess it was in the last year that I was working on it, all of a sudden the light bulb went on. <laughs> you know? And I fell in love with it. And to this day, it's, it's my favorite opera. And if you had asked me you know, 15 years ago if, if I'd ever say Meister Singer was my favorite opera, I'd have thought you were crazy. But it's such an incredible piece. It's, got to be the, you know, the ninth wonder of the world. <laughs> but um, I love it so much, not just the part of socks, but, but the whole piece. Uh, there's nothing in it, I think, could, that could be cut at all. And, um, and the character itself of socks, uh, I, I love not only his music, but uh, the character. It just feels like it's the kind of person we all would like to be, you know, uh, benevolent, caring, kind sense of humor. Um, it's just a wonderful role to play. And uh, as I've said to many people, one of the great things about it is that I'm sitting 90% of the time. <laughs> so, so it's not tiring that way. And, uh, but it's, it's, I feel fortunate to be able to, to sing it. And um, now and then things come along, uh, whether it be an opera role or something in concert, where you're sitting there listening to the music and you just all of a sudden it, it dawns on you that you're fortunate to be able to be in that position to do it. And that's the way I feel about Meistersinger. Along with never thinking that I would do Meistersinger, uh, there was a point in my career when I thought, Wagner, oh my God, no, <laughs> no way. And uh, it was, uh, I guess, in my early years at the Met, in the first two or three years there, uh, I won a, a grant to uh, study at Berlitz. Uh, to take a course and uh, I took Italian and it was one of these total immersion courses for uh, two or three weeks where you're there for like 10 hours a day and you don't speak anything but Italian and um, when the person was giving me the the grant he said but what about German why, why don't you want to take German and I said German I'm never gonna sing German <laughs> to me opera was Italian and French you know um, and um, it just, I, I had done a couple of small roles in German and uh, the style just seemed to be totally against what I was used to singing. Uh, I cut my teeth on the bel canto repertoire and to me line and legato was, was everything. And it just seemed like German was so totally different with the language and the glottal stops and how you have to accent the words and everything. 
And my first year at the Met, they asked me to uh, cover King Mark in Tristan. And um, so I was 23, 24 at the time. And uh, so I, I was coaching it, and uh, the coach I was working with, uh, Walter Talsig, anybody in music knows Walter Talsig, you know, and uh, a real stickler for things. And so I would start singing. He said, no, no, not, not, not legato. You have to separate. And it's not da alis, it's da alis, and things like that. And um, so I was tied up in knots. And I went to Bob Herman, who was the second in command at that uh, point at the Met. And I said, you're going to have to take me off of this. I said, it's, it's not the, the range of the part vocally. I mean, that's fine, but it's the style of singing. And it just, I feel like I'm not doing right by my voice, that I'm you know, messing my voice up by singing that style. And he said, oh, well, we don't want you to hurt yourself. So he took me off of it. And for years, I thought, that's the way you sing German. And um, so then when I finally started working on Valkyrie, that's another one that took me a while to get into. People kept telling me I should learn Botan, I should get into Botan. I thought, eh. And um, whenever I started listening to Valkyrie, I made the mistake of sitting in an easy chair in front of a fireplace with the score, starting with Act One. You know, in five minutes, I was asleep. <laughs> so uh, finally, um, one summer, I was in Santa Fe, and Two people whose opinions I respected very much, Terry McEwen, uh, who used to be with Decca Records and at that point was uh, the head of San Francisco Opera, and Bliss Hebert, uh, stage director, who's also a fabulous musician. Both of them, in the course of a month, said to me, you have to do Votan, start with the op sheet at the end, and then work your way backwards. And as soon as I heard the op sheet, I was hooked. I said, man, I have to sing this. <laughs> but if I'm going to sing that, I have to sing the rest of it. So, so that's how I actually got into it. And um, so I would, when I was in San Francisco, I was in and Richard Bonnie was, uh, conducting. And I told him that I was starting to work on the, on the ring, on Valkyra first, because uh, we were going to do it in San Francisco. And he said, well, if you start doing that, uh, you won't be singing this stuff anymore, meaning the bel canto and the coloratura pieces, uh, like Semiramide. And And um, I said, well, if I find that to be the case, then I'll give up the, the Wagner, because I don't want to give up the Italian and the French. And when I told him I was studying it with Hans Hotter, he said, oh, well, if you do it like Hotter, it'll be all right. He said, uh, Hoff, uh, Hotter was like the softest of the Botons, and by soft he meant legato, lime type of thing. It wasn't what we like to refer to as the Bayreuth Bark type of thing. So um, when I started working with Hotter, uh, I met him in uh, um, Salzburg and um, asked if he would work with me on the, on the Valkyrie, and he said yes. So the first day I went to work with him, I thought I had it all down. I had the words all perfectly and all the, uh, 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 all the glottal stops in this and that and the other. And I sang the first half a page. And he went, nine, nine, legato, legato, <laughs> wine. I said, oh, well, okay, I can do that. And so on almost every page of my score, I had Italian eight, legato, wine, <laughs> like that. And, um, and it, it's amazing what, how you can do Wagner like that. Uh, a lot of people think it has to be very, uh, what I would say, perpendicular this way instead of you know, uh, horizontal from point A to point B. And um, particularly Meister singer, uh, I find there are some very chatty spots like uh, in Act One and um, some spots in Act Two with Beckmesser, but when you get to the Schuster Schuster scene in, uh, in Act Three with Walter and teaching him how to write a song, uh, write a poem, it's it's amazing the line that, that Wagner wrote, and um, and the artists too. I mean, their their combination of a narration type of thing, uh, talking, but then these beautiful lines come out of it as well, and that's one of the things that makes the part so interesting to do. The, uh, I 
have always loved working with the Boston Symphony. Um, they're a great group. They're, they're nice. Uh, a lot of these orchestras are filled with prima donnas, <laughs> I gotta tell you. But, but these guys, they're very nice and they appreciate singers. You know, they're, they're always complimenting you and smiling and thanking you for being there to work with them. And it, it makes you feel really welcome. And, uh, and I love Symphony Hall. Uh, I love the acoustics. I love Boston, period, you know, the, the history of the place. And um, I feel really happy that I'm doing this particular thing in Boston, uh, uh, part of an opera that I, that I love so much. And to be able to do it with the Boston Symphony, I think it's great. I'm looking forward to it. Johannes Stein. Was? 